Welcome to my next tutorial. This will be for the tin can purse. Inspired by that tin can one that I saw on the web, on the web by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And these are the materials we're going to be working with. Let me just start off here. I was going to get a family sized soup can, but then I looked at it and in actuality it was smaller than, uh, you know, what I thought. So I looked around and actually I thought this Swanson chicken broth can was the perfect size for a clutch that you can actually hold stuff in and it didn't look too small because even the family size soup can, it just looked way too small. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to need some gel, super glue, the gel kind, any kind of thick foamy gel, super glue that you can get good, don't, don't get that thin watery one. Hinges, any kind of hinges will do. I'm not sure if mine are going to end up being too big for this can, so I might get others, but you will need hinges. Some strong shears, preferably tin cutting shears. Some felt, because that's what we're going to line the purse in. Now this is optional. Keep in mind, as I say in some of my videos, I do make these in order. So up until this point, I have not started yet. But I'm going to say for now, this waterproof silicone caulking is optional. I will show you what I intend to do because um, even though I don't have it listed here, we are going to need a can opener <clears throat> to open it up like this. And then once we cut it in half, so that way the can, the, the, the clutch opens, you know, it opens long ways. You can glue the two pieces back together here and then seal them with the uh, silicone caulking. So that way it stays in place and then afterwards we can spray paint it. Um, so other than that, your spray paint, I'm choosing to go with how the picture looks, which is a gold metallic. And then um, <clears throat> op optional as well, you know, you could have because the, the purse is going to open long ways. I just think there's going to be a line right down the middle of this t can. Um, <clears throat> maybe if you want to have a button to, to open or buy some kind of little latch that they sell. Um, you know, they'll sell at the craft store or something to like a hook, a hook and eye to close it. You know, or you could just get creative with Velcro and a piece of, piece of pleather. It's all good. So for now, these are the uh, so for now these are the materials that we're going to need for our tin can soup clutch. So let's get started. All right, and here's where we are at this point. I removed the lid, and with the can opener, I took off both top and bottom of the can. I washed it out. Um, what I'm going to do next is there is some, I don't know if you could see it, I think you can. There is some glue residue from, well, from the glue, obviously. So what I'm going to do, and I'll add this in the material list in my description box. I'm going to get some goo gone, and I'm going to go ahead and clean this off, because if you leave it, it will make your can look ugly come time to spray paint it. You'll see all these little squiggly lines of glue. So you don't want that. Try and make it look as nice as possible. And um, so yeah, you know, you could scrape it off with a razor, hot water, boil it. But I have goo gone and this works really good. So I'm going to go ahead and rub that off and then I'll be back. So the goo gone took off all the glue residue. It's nice and clean now. I love that stuff. Now we're gonna have to start cutting. What I did with the two pieces here, as you can see with my, my tin shears, I cut the bottoms in half and I'm about to cut this one. I just made a line on the inside. So it doesn't, I mean, probably won't even matter because I'm gonna spray paint it, but these Swanson ones, they're four inches in diameter. So I just made two little you know, lines, made the line, followed it. I'm gonna cut them in half, both of them. <clears throat> now, on the can, you're gonna have to do the same thing. You're gonna have to 
cut it completely. So there's two parts, there's two pieces. <clears throat> and the nice thing about the tin can is on one side, you it gives you a very nice line for you to get started. And then what you can do on the other side, I'm just gonna line up my, my marker with the line here on the tin can. And then I don't know if you could see, but I made a little mark on the inside of the can so that way when I cut the other side, well, it's it's even with this line. Now this one was a little bit tricky. Um, I would say you're gonna need to have a lot of strength to do the initial cut. You're gonna have to have a lot of strength to, to get through this bottom piece right here. My tin shears did not wanna go through it so I had to end up using some gardening shears just to snip this little hard aluminum edge right here and once I did that then I was able to get in here and start cutting along the line your can will start bending outwards and getting a little bit out of shape so um, you know when you're done you can just get some some pliers or something like that and then just kind of like bend everything back as straight as you can um, also, what I think would be a really good tool to have nearby just in case is a rubber mallet in case you need to bang something back into place. But again, that's optional. You might have an easier time than I do. If you have an electric you know, metal sheet cutter, you'll just go through this really quick and it'll be a much easier experience for you than what I'm about to go through. So let me go ahead and cut through this bull right here and then um, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done all right so I actually broke a cardinal sin of mine I had a really hard time getting through from here to here with my gardening shears and my tin shears so I called upon the powers of one of my sewing scissors well you know technically it's not really sewing scissors but I got this from Harbor Freight it's a super long 14 inch shears and I was able to carefully get through the middle. Unfortunately, I cut myself while I was doing this. Be careful. Children, do not try this on your own. Look at, see, I got blood all over my tin can. That can't possibly be sanitary, but oh well, at least it's mine. See all these little, here, I ain't even gonna touch it. I almost touch it again. A lot of these little jagged pieces start popping up when you start cutting it. So I'm gonna snip those I'm also going to sand the edges just a little bit. And again, I would say at this point, unless you have a sponge sander, don't do it without proper hand protection because uh, you're gonna start cutting yourself and cutting yourself is no joke. It really hurts on these tin cans. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other side of my tin can, finish this piece, sand these edges, and the other edge that I'm gonna create when I cut this in half, and then we can go ahead and spray paint. All right, so I have them both cut now. I already sanded this one. If you have any uneven parts before you sand it that they're just really big, you can always just get your, your tin shears and kind of just like give it a clip but you know, if it looks good enough, that's what I just do. I just get a paintbrush if I don't have a, a sponge and then I'll just take it and I'll, and I'll sand it. <clears throat> wow, this is like the first time I've ever cut myself doing one of these projects. This is must this is how Rob Czar from Threadbanger must feel like every single week. All right. So uh, now let's go ahead and take these outside. Take all your pieces and, um, you know, in my case, I'll go ahead and take my, my hinges 
and I'm going to spray paint them outside and then we can move on to the next step. So here I started gluing the, I already spray painted it as you can see. Uh, where's my, where's my hinge? Well, I spray painted the hinge, but that's okay. We'll, we're not, we'll not worry about that for now. So I have my, my sides and I have my gel super glue. Now I do, it did kind of bow out the, the main can part. So it was a little hard to piece together the the sides that I cut out back in. So what I did is I, I did kind of bend it in and right now while it's dry drying, I have some rubber bands as you can see here, kind of holding it this way inwards. So that way this can stay. Cause right now I try to do it and let go and this would just like come right off. But I held it for a little bit to set the, the super glue and then I put the rubber bands. And then while it's drying here, I just put another, another seal layer on the outside and the inside of the can. I think I am going to need to do the silicone caulking because on some parts in here, it there's, there's like a very tiny space that you could see through the can. And of course, I don't want that. So after the super glue dries and everything is set, then I'm going to go back and put the caulking just to seal it and, you know, make sure that stuff can't fall out or, you know, just no spaces. It's supposed to be a can. It's supposed to be sealed, right? So let's, let's stay with that, that concept there. So I'm going to do that. I'll do this one. I'll, I'm probably, I had bought this. It came as a, a, a pair. I'm probably going to end up using the whole thing on both of them. Like one, one per can, you know? Ah. But, I mean, other than that, everything seems to be going well so far. Um, so, yeah, so see, and I put it right underneath this little lip right here. So I try and fit it right underneath the lip the way it is when you, or at least I think that's how it is when you have the can. See, so I put it there. I don't know if you can tell. There's a space. Oh shit. Sorry. There's a space right here. So once I have this part glued, this is def this is the reason why I'm putting the the silicone sealant, the caulking because I got to fill that space in. I mean, like I said when I when I clipped this open, this bowed out, it kind of went you know, a little out of a place. So you just kind of push down on it this way to mold it back. So I'm going to go ahead and glue everything. And then next, next step is next. All right. So it's been overnight. I've kept my rubber bands on. I'm going to continue to keep them on just in case. So now we're going to go ahead and do the um, silicone caulking. When you do this, what you'll want to do is maybe have um, a little a little thing of water and a Q-tip. Um, I'll probably get some baby wipes just because I don't want to keep water around here too much. Because when you do it, sometimes, you know, it gets smudged off on the sides. So you want to just be able to, like, clean it up and smooth it out. Kind of like when you're frosting a cake, you want to clean up the edges on the on the base or the plate or whatever. Same concept. So I have my wipies ready. So let me just kind of get it started. Get everything to the end because you don't want it like exploding on you. All right, so I got it started. It was a little clogged for me. And remember, don't worry about this because you still have to do a second coat of paint. I only did one first coat of paint. I'm definitely going to want to do another one.
Okay, so again, if you have your rubber bands on, please leave them just in case, you know, it's not strong enough yet because I don't want it to be when you, you snap the bands, everything just like explodes outwards and it, you know, it's, it's not holding up. So, um, let's see. So according to these directions, we have to let it cure, or I don't know, maybe I shouldn't even put quotations. Literally, it has to cure for 24 hours. <clears throat> so again, just put these to the side. You're going to let them dry completely 24 hours. Don't chance it. Please don't. And then once it's dried for 24 hours, then we'll do the uh, last coat of spray paint to cover the white. Then we're going to go ahead and move on to putting in the lining with the felt on the inside of the bag, um, covering up the edges a little bit more just to protect them so that way you don't cut yourself because there are still some little snagglies that I need to cut and sand down. So, But all in all, this is looking pretty good. So yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> 